Well, good morning, Green Acres. It is so, so good to see each of you out uh, this morning to be able to celebrate not only the Lord's Supper, uh, but to celebrate uh, the Word of God and the preaching of that Word and to be able to respond uh, appropriately in that, uh, in, that, in that hearing. So why don't we stand together as we worship and then we'll pray and sing for a little while. Let's worship as we, as we stand together and pray. God, I thank you again for this day. Lord, you have honored us with your presence by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are so, so very good and we do dearly love you. We thank you, God, for this privilege, for this opportunity to be able to worship and serve you. God, would you have your perfect will and your perfect way during this day? Lord, in, in all the elements of what we do today, Lord, whether it's through the Lord's Supper or through memorial or through singing or the preaching of your word, Lord, have your way as we give in all that we do, Lord, inhabit our praises. And we dedicate this time to you in the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. Y'all, let's worship as we sing the table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at his table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord, and I won't hunger anymore at his table. Come on, you weary, come and find his yoke is easy. Y'all, 
Worship as we sing. Here, moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Every voice singing. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I work worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. Yeah. 
you that you are a God that has promised us time and time again that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, and that is who you are. You are always with us, uh, no matter our circumstance, no matter where we are at, we are your children and you are chasing us. Father, we love you for your grace and your mercy. In your precious name, amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you guys are learning. I love it, man. You guys are starting to talk back. I love it. We are so thankful you guys are here. I hope you are excited. I know as your pastor, I am excited for today, for the kickoff, for all the things that are coming up, and we'll talk more about that. But I want to encourage you, if you haven't been here for a while, or if you are visiting us for the very first time, I want to encourage you, inside of your bulletin's a little tear-off, I'd love for you to fill that out for us. Just let us know that you're here. Uh, I'd love to be able to write you a letter tomorrow morning and just thanking you for coming and worshiping with us. Lots of things are going on. As I said, we are starting back tonight, um, kind of getting back in the groove. And we're doing that this morning with taking the Lord's Supper. And we'll we'll do that a a little bit later. But I want to ask you, if there was somebody that slipped in without getting a cup, uh, Lord's Supper. I would encourage you, if you did not receive one of these when you came in, if you would just throw your hand up. We have some deacons and ushers in the back that they'll get you one. I think they did a pretty good job. But if you didn't get one, you're going to need that. Also, not just kicking off with Lord's Supper, but starting tonight, we're going to start getting you back in the kind of the motions uh, and calendaring, coming back to church on the PM service. So for the next three Wednesday nights, if you come back, here's what I promise you, all right? You don't have to hear me, amen? You're going to get food, amen, uh, and it's going to be a good time, all right? So, I mean, what, why would you not want to come back? If you parked on that side of our building, you've noticed some large tents out there. Our guys set that up yesterday, and we're going to be outside uh, just having fun, food, just hanging out. Socially distancing outside um, for the students and the kids, and for those of you who are like me or a little young at heart, we got uh, Gaga Ball, Nine Air, uh, Nine Square in the air. We're gonna have kickball game. Um, but if that's not you and you just want to come, we encourage you come sit in the shade, bring a lawn chair. Uh, I think tonight we're doing watermelon and some drinks and everything. It's just a time for us to just start to get back into normal. You know, everybody keeps talking about, well, there's going to be a new normal, a new normal. Well, honestly, I'm tired of new normal. I want to get back to the old normal. And so uh, this is just our way of doing it. So for the next three Wednesday nights, we're going to be right here on our campus in the back at six o'clock. So br- what? Yeah. What is well, Sunday night? What did I say? Uh, you know, that's not what I mean. Sunday. Well, I don't know. I'm thinking January, people. I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to get church in the full swing. Sunday night, starting tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, and so it'll be fun. But I do want to tell you, so you can start calendaring, on October the 4th, that's four Sunday nights from tonight, our church, Green Acres, we have rented out the entire building of Sky Zone Trampoline Park in Macon. All right, so... If you are, you know, 50 and under, you should be excited. If you're 50 and older, you're like, I don't know if I want a trampoline. But I'll tell you this, you get me and Ed on a trampoline, you guys want to be there to see it, okay? I'm just telling you, it's going to be a good time. Um, But it's a great time for our young families and for those of you who have grandkids to invite them to come. The only cost is for $3, and that's for the pair of socks that you get to take home. you got to use their socks because we don't want germs. But it's just us. Uh, It's going to be a great time, and you'll get more info about that, but just put that on your calendar. But as you can see, not only are we kind of ramping up and just having excitement, uh, then on October the 18th, six weeks from today, we're starting back with Sunday school, 
uh, kind of an abbreviated, kind of different Sunday school, but Sunday school, we're going to start back with children's ministry, with youth ministry, with children's church and children's worship, kids worship, uh, and then Sunday nights, the adults will be back in the sanctuary. So in six weeks, on Sunday nights, we're going to be the old normal. It's going to be awesome, and we are excited. I am excited, and I hope you're excited. So you will hear more about this. You'll see more about this. Also want to remind you, after today, after the service, we're going to dismiss and give you guys a few minutes. And then after that, if anybody would like to stay, we will have our yearly budget forum. So for the 2020-21 budget, uh, this is where you can ask any question of the finance committee uh, about our budget. And then next week, we will vote on that. We, we like to be transparent. This is God's money, and we want to make sure that we're using it for his kingdom and not our kingdom. And then one last announcement that's not in your bulletin is that tonight at 4.30, if you are a a WANA worker or kids ministry, um, they have called a meeting at 4.30 at C101. So you're going to come here and see kind of and talk about how the new kids ministry is going to look and then just plan to stay at 6 o'clock right after and have a good time. Are you guys excited this morning? Man. I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of dead people. Come on. You know, I, you guys are, are you guys excited this morning? All right. Uh, well, as you can tell, in the middle of our bulletin, we have our prayer request because we're not meeting in small groups right now. Six weeks we will. Um, and so we encourage you to look over those names, be in prayer for those names. Uh, and then Pastor Michael will probably have some updates and then uh, a little memorial. We're going to go straight into the memorial, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I left all of my updates sitting on my desk. If there are updates, please forgive me uh, for not having those uh, ready to, uh, to speak this morning. Uh, what I am going to ask you encourage, encourage you to do is to be very, very diligent about praying for each other. Uh, praying for those that are on that list. Uh, there are some that are on that list that are not a part of our fellowship that are in very real need of our prayers. And, uh, and so I'm asking you to do that. And, uh, and I will be uh, far more diligent to bring a list in. I think this is the first time I've left a list in my, in my office for this. Uh, but anyway, uh, please, please uh, be praying uh, for each other and be very diligent about that. You know, the only way to tell the true legacy of any tree is to lay it down. A tree has to be laid down to understand the storms that it has been through. The good years, the bad years, the droughts, and the near tropical. Pauline Martin walked this earth 30,401 days. Some of those were very, very good days. Some of those were very, very dark and arid days. But when you lay down the tree of her life and look upon it, what you see, what you see is a life well lived. I asked uh, in this time of memorial that we'll have for Ms. Pauline, you know she was one of the last five charter members that we had. We still have the Stapletons. and We still have a couple of our widows. Uh, but she was, she was one of the very rare few that we have left. And we wanted to be very careful to spend some time celebrating her life. The family had asked if there was any way for us to allow for just a private family funeral. We wanted to honor that. We wanted to honor that. And so the family gathered Friday afternoon, and I led them through a very short uh, service of memorial about Pauline. But we wanted to be very careful to have some time where we could spend some time celebrating a life well lived. One of the ways that I like to do uh, in celebrating a life is to have those that were the very closest to her uh, write some things down. And so I asked one of her very best friends in this world uh, to write one. Let me read that for you. I had known Miss Pauline for 38 to 40 years. Anyone who did not know her really missed a treat. She was a very sweet and caring lady. I remember when she and Bob got married. I was so very happy for the two of them. One quick funny story. 
I had altered a pair of pants for her because she would not cut them off as a pair of Bob's pants. Bob said to her, Pauline, you will cut hair all day long. Why won't you cut off my pants? She told him, well, hair will grow back. Pants won't. That was Miss Helen Bird. Then I asked three of her Sunday school classmates to... uh, to write a letter as well. This first one is actually Pauline's substitute whenever Pauline wasn't able to be uh, at church because she was on another one of her cruises. So Erlene wrote, quote, When God answers our prayers, ladies, why are we so surprised? He's our Heavenly Father, and He loves us more than anyone can or could. He wants to bless us with all good things, and Don't you love it when God shows you where you left your keys or shows you a good parking space? God really does want to hear from us, not just when times are bad, but all the time. Isn't God's grace amazing? Pauline told us those things often. She and I shared a love of God's Word and a love for studying God's Word. She and I would often talk about the different books we had at our fingertips whenever we wanted to study a certain section of scriptures uh, more, and we loved just sitting and reading those books to hear what people had to say about God's Word and how we could share Him with others. Because of some very trying times, she had a special love for her Heavenly Father, and she always shared her love of her Heavenly Father with everyone. Not only did she share with us, ladies, God's love, but she also shared God's love with the people whose hair she cut. She shared her testimony with them, with her neighbors. She also shared her testimony and love of God with the young ladies in her high school Sunday school class. I won't ask who was a part of that. Pauline was always on the lookout for ways to share what God had given her with others. Whether they were in the community, in our Sunday school class, or with someone in the church who needed help, she shared her testimony, her prayers, and her finances with those in need around her. We will always remember Pauline's love for Christ and her love for her Sunday school class. She called us her family, her sisters in Christ. We will remember her love, faith, hope, and strength in the Lord. Another letter written was, One of God's many blessings in life is the gift of friendship. God blessed me with Pauline and Bob's friendship. Over the years, our friendship grew to be more like family. Pauline was a good cook, and we exchanged and share food many times over the years, even in the recent months when it was difficult for her to walk and get around. Bob especially liked cookies. Pauline called him the cookie monster. As you know, one of Pauline's greatest pleasures was going to Belk's. She was a great shopper and loved a bargain. It was a joy not only to buy for herself, but she always was thinking of others and what she could buy for them. I was blessed to be one of those recipients of those many shopping trips over the years. And on a personal note, uh, my daughter Abigail was uh, one of those recipients through the years. Pauline was a faithful servant who loved the Lord in Green Acres Baptist Church, especially her sisters in Christ Sunday school class. We were all her family, and she told us of the many, many times. She was such an encouragement to us and truly a bold witness for our Lord and Savior. One of her greatest desires during the last few months was being able to get back to Sunday school. She missed being together in the classroom with all of us, and we missed her. Pauline believed in the power of prayer. She was a genuine prayer warrior, and I know she and Bob prayed for me, and I will miss those prayers. They loved me, and I knew that I loved them. It's so important to tell people who you truly care about that you love them. God's timing is perfect, and I am thankful he allowed them to be in the life, in my life, for many years. But I am also thankful Bob and Pauline are together now forever. God is good all the time. Mary Frances Foster. 
The final, final letter that I'm going to read today is uh, kind of a blast from the past. Uh, a former member of Green Acres and a member of the Sisters in Christ Sunday School class. Uh, she actually uh, departed from Green Acres back in 2003. Let's, uh, let's hear from Judy Jennings. I am honored and humbled to share my thoughts of Pauline with you today. She will forever be a special lady in my eyes. Two words, Pauline Martin. If there was a dictionary <clears throat> that would have these two words together, the definition would read, a beautiful, kind, thoughtful southern lady, a devoted wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and friend, someone who put, our, put others ahead of herself. But most important part of the definition would continue to read a Christian who loved and put God first in her life, a dedicated Sunday school teacher who loved every class member, a prayer warrior, and an encourager. Pauline was a faithful member of Green Acres since its beginning and served in numerous roles throughout the years. I remember her as the ultimate Sunday school teacher, one of the best teachers I have ever had. She taught us what she learned from her own teacher, Jesus Christ. I celebrate with her today because she is in the presence of the Savior to whom her life testified. I have many memories of Sunday mornings here at Green Acres in Pauline's class. We had serious, deep biblical discussions as she opened God's word for us. We also had tons of funny and silly ones as well. Like the Sunday we talked about our glorified bodies Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You can only imagine the conversations that went on in that Sunday school class. But if I start sharing these, we might be here for hours. So I just want to say, Pauline helped to develop me into the Christian I am today. Next to my own mother, she was the godliest lady I have ever known. She served as a role model and an inspiration to me. She shared the love of Christ in all she did. In other words, she excelled at bringing glory to God. There's no doubt I'll miss Pauline a great deal. She was a very important part of my life for so many years. I think I'll miss most uh, is just talking to her, getting her opinion of things, or just asking her how to solve a problem, whether big or small. She always would give godly insight no matter what. Even after I moved to Hawkinsville, I would often call her just to check on things and hear her soft, kind voice. I know most of you will miss her too, but let's, not try to fo let's try not to focus on our sadness and grief. Pauline led a great life and accomplished so much. She wouldn't want to be the cause of our sadness, so please join with me in celebrating her wonderful life. Let's rejoice that she's with our Heavenly Father today. I know he welcomed her home saying, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Whether you knew Pauline as mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, or just Pauline, she was exactly the same to all of us. She was a trusted friend. You knew it and you felt it every time you were with her. Thank you, Pauline, for the life you lived the godly example you always provided. I love you, Judy Jennings. Many of y'all made it out to the viewing uh, this, past, this past week, and uh, because things were so, so different, the funeral home actually made an exclusion. They, they had these printed up, and they forgot to hand them out. At the end of the service, if you would like one of these uh, memorial cards, you're certainly welcome to pick one up. They have them at the uh, Welcome Center, and the ushers will be glad to assist you and get, you, get, one in there, get one of those in your hands if you'd like one. You know, Psalm 116, verse 15 says, mm, it says that, we even have it open right there, and it's about five feet away from me, and I cannot remember it to save my life. It just left me. It's about how the Lord looks at the death of His saints. It is a joy. It is a joy for the Lord whenever He has one of His saints join Him because of death. He does dearly love each of us, and He has spent 
uh, everything that he had, he spent himself to assure that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It's precious because he went out of his way to make sure that his saints were with him for eternity. We did everything we could to mess that up, didn't we? And yet he did everything he could to fix it. And he fixed it perfectly. And so it is precious when one of his passes. If you are in Christ, you know the kind of joy, the kind of joy that it is to be in him. If you are not, you know the confusion, you know the heartache, you know the heartbreak. But you can be assured today, just as Pauline was, 30,401 days. What a legacy. What a legacy. Well, as we continue to worship this day, can we all stand together? Can we worship together as we sing, Man of Sorrows? Let's rise up together as we sing.
and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Because today is Lord's Supper, we setting this time apart that we may keep a good relationship with our Father. You know, you always tell people in... Uh, as people come in and they get married, a relationship is a, is a conversation of both people giving and taking from one another. The same is true as a relationship with our Father. And at this time, as we sing this next song, this is a time that we can partake in that relationship. That we are not just takers of our God, but we are also givers. And that relationship requires both giving and taking. And so in just a moment during the song, the ushers will make their way from the back forward and that you might be able to give uh, your, your gifts and your offerings uh, as we get ready to open God's word and partake in the Lord's Supper. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for all that you've given us. How we do not deserve anything, but yet you are the Father who still gives. Father, we thank you for all that you've given us, and we thank you for the privilege that allows us to give back during this time, to show that our faith is not just in our own works and the things of this world, but our faith is in the things of the world that cannot yet be seen, that we may give back so that we can further your kingdom on this earth. In your precious name, amen. You guys can be seated.
May we pray, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to praise you for who you are. Holy God. Thank you for this day, this holy day to worship you. It is your providence that we are here at this time in this place. Help us, dear Lord, to confess any un unconfessed sin, to admit it. Cleanse our hearts and minds of unrighteousness, dear Lord, to prepare us to hear your words from your messenger, our pastor. Let your words and that message convert and save a lost soul today, we pray. It was a providence that uh, we're here, and it's possible that someone is here today that doesn't know you, Lord. Help him, dear Lord, to hear and understand your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as you have noticed on the front of your bulletin, there is a spaceship uh, in the word T minus. And so it's not just a sermon series, it's really, as we talked before in the announcement time, it's this kind of six-week step. Uh, if, you were, if you've had the luxury of being in Florida when they shoot off a rocket or a space shuttle, it is something to be seen. And even if you haven't, we've probably all seen the movies or documentaries of the whole thing happening and you're kind of waiting there and they're saying, all right, T minus 44 minutes, T minus 26 minutes, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we have liftoff. Right? Everybody kind of knows that. And so for the next six weeks, we are in the T minus stage. We are counting down to the launch, to the liftoff. And that launch is that October the 18th day where we are going to start back with Sunday school and children and youth and children and kids worship and all the things that go with that. We know that for months and months and months, you have gone with your new normal. And as I said before, I'm tired of it. I want to go back to old normal. And so we are counting down uh, and getting ready for that. But just like a rocket or a space shuttle lifts off in the T-minus stage, there is a lot of things that happen that when you're watching a rocket ship or you're watching a space shuttle, you don't realize What's happening? In this T minus stage, there are built in stops and breaks that NASA has to go through to make sure everything is perfect. And so it's not just a countdown clock that says T minus, and you're just caught. It, the clock will stop sometimes for hours, sometimes for days. And in these stops, in this countdown, it's made that certain people would check certain systems and they would give a go or a no-go. And this would, this would tell the people that are sitting there controlling everything that everything is perfect. So for the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at our lives individually, corporately, and as a church to see if we are ready to give a go or a no-go for our launch. This week we're going to be talking about our spiritual pre-check. Next week we'll be talking about a physical pre-check. The week after, a relational pre-check. The week after, talking about our fuel pre-check. And then the Sunday before our launch off, we'll be looking at, is the church ready? Is there, is there a church pre-check? And then on October the 18th, that will be our liftoff. That will be our launch Sunday. It will be a different service than you've ever experienced. It's going to be a celebration. It's going to be a great time that we're coming back together to say that Green Acres, we are back to business. We are, we're getting into it and we're going back to old normal. And so in this T-minus series, today we're at T-minus 5 and we're looking at a spiritual pre-check. 
And we're starting this with the Lord's Supper. What better way to come together and to look at a spiritual pre-check than to partake in the Lord's Supper together? For many of you, you haven't participated in Lord's Supper together corporately since January. This is my first time with you guys and be able to participate at the Lord's Supper. You heard uh, earlier in the service, Luke 22 read. In Luke chapter 22, verse 14, it talks about Jesus saying that when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. You guys remember how they reclined at the table, right? Do do we need another example? No, he says no, right? He doesn't want to get up here and lay down. But everybody's laying down. It's a good time. They're during, this is during the Passover. They're having a meal. Every year, a Jew has to celebrate the Passover. It's a seven-day festival, and God made them to do this to remind them that a long time ago, they were in Egypt, and they were released by God And Moses led them across the Red Sea and then took them through the desert, eventually to the promised land. So every year since then, God has said, you must celebrate what I have done. When things are looking rough, remember, God is still paying attention and God will rescue you. And so for years and years and years, thousands of years... On that particular week, they have to celebrate the Passover meal. It was during this meal, (coughs) excuse me, and he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus knows in just a few hours, the crucifixion process will begin. He will have to go to trial. He will be set up. He will be beat. He will be scouched. He knows his, his days on earth in a physical status is very, very close. For I tell you, I will not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to it, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Now, for many of this, these are words that we've heard many times. But for the disciples who've given their life to follow this man, Jesus, for the past three years, are now hearing something that they have never heard before. Jesus says, hurry, let's do the Passover. Because I'm about to be suffering. I'm about to be beaten and taken over. He goes so much and says, this will be the last Passover meal that I will ever partake in until heaven, until the kingdom. Verse 19, and he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. His body... It says he took this bread and he broke it, showing, kind of giving a a, a kind of like a children's lesson to the disciples that says this bread, which is which is flaky, which is crumbly, that will eventually dissolve away. This body, which is going away, is for you. And he goes on and he says, it has been given for you. Now, on this side of the cross, we know exactly what it means, right? Jesus was to die on a crucifix, that we could understand on this side of the cross that he was our substitute because Jesus hung on that cross. Now the disciples were going to be allowed to go to heaven because Jesus hung on a cross for those who believe they will be allowed to go into heaven. He was paying our substitute. And likewise, after the cup that eaten, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The Passover that they've been taking for thousands and thousands of years is over. Jesus says this is the last one. This is the last Passover. This cup has been poured out for you and this is the new covenant, the new meal, the new thing that we're doing today. And for probably many people in this room, you've seen the Lord's Supper done a bajillion times. But today I want to point out very quickly seven things that the Lord's Supper is. 
In your bulletin is a lot of lines. If you like taking notes, you might want to just number them one through seven. Because these are a lot of things that a lot of pastors will say during the Lord's Supper, but I'm going to try to quickly put them all in one message as our pre-check. If we are looking to launch off, if we as a church are getting ready to lift off and to move forward into our community, we must pass all of our pre-checks. We must say there's a go or a no-go. And so these seven steps are able for us to look and to say, are you spiritually a go or are you spiritually a no-go? Number one, the Lord's Supper is a remembrance. It's a remembrance of Jesus Christ's saving work. Now all of these verses that I'm going to be quoting you are coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and chapter 11. And I'm going to kind of jump around, so if you like doing that, hang on, here we go, right? But number one, why is the Lord's Supper a remembrance of the saving work? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 says this, In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we come together as a church and we take the Lord's Supper, we are remembering the cross. You know, for, for Catholics, they love to draw on the idea that Jesus is still on the cross. If you know a Catholic, if you go to a Catholic hospital, if you go, uh, to, if you go overseas where there's a lot of Catholic churches, Jesus will always be on the cross in that Catholic. That's their focus. For us as Christians, as Baptists, ours is really Easter Sunday. We really draw on the idea that Jesus, yeah, he died, but man, he is resurrected. He has robbed the grave. He's no longer in the grave, which is great and it's exciting, but sometimes we have to focus on the cross. Why did he have to resurrect? Why did he die? Was it because millions of Jews forced him and pressed him in and eventually just killed him in a riot? No. It's because Jesus went willingly to die for a reason. So a part of the Lord's Supper is remembering what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He sacrificed his body for our sin so we could be delivered from our sin. He sacrificed, we were delivered. He paid the payment for the penalty so that we could have forgiveness of our penalty. He gave death and we get life. So when we take the Lord's Supper, it's not just grape juice, it's not just a weird cracker, but the first thing that it is, it's remembering the cross. Number two, it's the sharing of Jesus Christ's presence. The sharing of Jesus Christ's presence. What do I mean by that? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. It says, the cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? What does that verse mean? When we take the Lord's Supper, we are truly sharing in the blood and the body of the Christ. Now, we do not believe that they turn into the physical and literal blood and body of Jesus like some other denominations and other religions in the world. But we believe they are simply grape juice and a cracker. But when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are sharing in the idea of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. It's the same thing that you do on every Sunday that you don't even know. 
You can be sitting in the audience and Mike is up here strumming away like want to be Kenny Rogers. And you're like, way maker, miracle worker. And in your mind, you are agreeing and you're seeing that God has made a way in my life. God has brought healing. He's been that miracle. When God was in that low part of my life, God took me out of the darkness and brought me in. It's the idea of putting to the fact that Jesus is with you. And so when we take the Lord's Supper, it's not just grape juice, it's not just cracker, but it's also understanding the presence of Jesus Christ. As Jesus was taking off to go sit at the right hand of the Father, he tells his disciples, I will send the Comforter with you. I will send the Holy Spirit. I will be with you until the end. So it's not just... Grape juice and a cracker. It's remembering what Jesus did on the cross. It's sharing the presence of Jesus with us. Thirdly, it is communing with other saints. It's communing with other saints. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. There is nothing that a church does better than the Lord's Supper. Because the reason of the Lord's Supper is literally, basically, taking us all the way back into time on the Mount of Golgotha where we can see our Savior hanging on a cross and we can all see ourselves there at the foot of the cross and say, we're all scum. Nobody is greater than anybody. Nobody has anything better than who Jesus is. And so when we come to the Lord's Supper, it takes us to the feet of a cross where we are all equal. We are all unworthy. We are all receiving God's unmerited grace and favor because He is God, not because who we are on. Oh, well, Pastor Sean, he's a pastor. He, he's holy. No, I'm at the bottom of the cross. Oh, Pastor Micah, Pastor Brian, Pastor Ed, no. Billy Graham, no. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. You know what the Lord's Supper also does? Communing with the saints? It's called the seventh inning stretch. You guys, you ready for this? Look around. Don't look at me anymore. Look around. Just literally take a moment. Look forward, backward, left, right, diagonal ways, up ways. It's like the Wonka Vader. Right? Anything you want, right? You know what the Lord's Supper does? It shows you you're not alone. It shows you you're not alone. How many times have you been in a dark place because you've been alone? There's nothing more than Satan wants to tell us than nobody's with you, you're all alone, nobody can help you. But when we come to church and we participate in the Lord's Supper and we're remembering what Jesus did, we're sharing that Jesus is with us, but we're also remembering we are a family. We're a church. We're together. If you have a problem, we've got answers. If you have an issue, we can help. And as we come together, Satan can attack you. Satan can attack a couple people. But I can assure you it's going to be really hard for a Satan to attack a whole congregation that is seeking after Christ. It's kind of like Walking in the jungle, there's safety in numbers. Would you rather be in a jungle by yourself or with a couple hundred people? I'd rather be with a couple hundred people. Some people are skinnier than I am and they can climb trees and get coconuts, right? Some people can dig better. Some people can hunt better. Some people can make clothes and sew. Some people are smart and can engineer a raft. Some people can dig and know where water's at. It takes a collection of people to move forward. Number four, worship God as one. Worship God as one. When we come to the Lord's Supper table, we're able to worship God as one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 20, Paul's writing, he says, No. I imply what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. 
I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Now, I know when a lot of people read this verse, it's really weird because we don't really talk in spiritual warfare sense. But what Paul is saying is saying you can't, you can't eat supper at Satan's table and then on Sunday come over to the Lord's table and be like, oh, Lord, your fried chicken is better. I'm going to eat here for this Sunday. And then by Sunday night, you're back over here eating at Satan's table, living your life the way that Satan wants you to live it. So when we come to the Lord's table, it's an idea of saying, when I'm looking at the Lord's Supper, when I'm remembering what Jesus did, when I know Jesus is with me, when I'm looking around a room of hundreds of Christian saints, now this is, causes me to look inward and to say, is God really my God? Is he the one thing that I'm really chasing? Or am I kind of walking this tightrope? I love God some days. I love Satan the other. Sean, I would never follow Satan. You know, the Bible says most people don't know they're following Satan. They believe they're following themselves. I love God on some days. And I want to do what Sean does on another day. Are you worshiping God Fully, 100% devotion. Number five. Number five tells us that uh, purifies our hearts and our minds. Why do we take the Lord's Supper? It purifies our hearts and minds. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 says, Let a person examine himself. Then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak, ill, and some have died. The Lord's table causes us to examine ourselves. Have you ever, I know it's a dumb question because everybody, have you ever been in a house where you know you're about to have a big meal, companies coming over? whether you're married or whether it's your mom, right? Company's coming over, and your sweet, precious wife, your Lord God-fearing mother, she turns into a demon-possessed woman. You guys know what I'm talking about? Sean, if you don't pick up your socks right now, everybody's coming over from the church. You want your deacons to see your socks. Why can't you even put them in the hamper? Literally, they're right next to the hamper. Why can't you put them in the hamper? Why can't you do the dishes? Sweep the dishes. Do this. Hey, go out and sweep the driveway. Baby, why am I sweeping the driveway? I said sweep it. Yes, ma'am. And you go out and sweep it, right? That's what we do, right? That's all of us when they come to our house, right? That's just normal. When you're expecting company, when you're expecting to have a meal with somebody great and important, it doesn't really matter who it is. It could be anybody. What happens? Everybody wants to look their best. Everybody's done this. It's the same way that many of you have turned around to your kids and said, you guys better be good. You know, they've done that. There's nothing, look, it is not, you guys are dead this morning. It is not, I'm telling you, I feel like, y'all awake? I don't know. I'm going to start screaming. I don't know. It is not Christmas until you are in a car with all your kids. You pull up into your grandma's house and you say, listen here, boys. Aunt Gertrude going to buy you some socks and you know what? You're going to love those socks. And if you don't love those socks, I'm going to take everything back to saying I got you. Right? That's Christmas, right? You want them to be on their best behavior. When we come to the Lord's table, it's not just being on the best behavior, but it is examining ourselves. It is looking at ourselves. What am I not following God in? Yeah, sure, I'm a Christian. Yes, I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. But you know what? There's some things in my life that really, if Christ was here, he'd probably be like, eh, that's probably not a good thing. What is that? When we come to the Lord's Supper table, it calls us to purify our hearts and the mind, to truly search in and to give away those things and to ask God to help us be like him. Number six. Proclamation. The Lord's Supper is a proclamation of Jesus' death and return. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, 26 goes on and says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Every time you go to church, every time you take the Lord's Supper in a small group, every time you sit at your dining room table and you take the Lord's Supper and you say, this is the bread, this is the juice, and this is what we do, you are proclaiming that Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus resurrected, and he died on the sins for you. Every time. It's not just grape juice. It's not just a little weird cracker. It is something so much more. And so when you take this cup, when you take this bread, you're proclaiming that Jesus died and that he's going to return. One of the biggest, most important things a church can do to share the gospel is to do the Lord's Supper together. Think about that. Somebody in a room this size today does not know Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. And a whole service has been crafted about Jesus dying for their sins, paying the penalty for their sins, so that they can have eternal life. What's more important than a couple hundred people getting together and say, I believe in Jesus, I know he died for me, and I want to remember that, and I want to be a part of that. Some of us can't even do that on social media. Some of us can't even do it at our workplace. Some of us can't even do it to our neighbors. Then why can't we just do it in the four walls of this building? What's so hard with saying that Jesus was here, he died for my sins, so that he would pay my penalty? Number seven. My favorite one. Number seven, it anticipates the kingdom anticipates the kingdom. Matthew chapter 26 verse 29 says, I tell you I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. As Jesus is taking the last Passover with his disciples and he says, before I go to suffer, before I go to die, I'm never going to take of this cup, I'm never going to take of this bread until you guys are all with me in the kingdom. And you know what? When I come back and all of my saints are in heaven with me, my father's going to set a table, and it's going to be the longest table you've ever seen. And in that table, there's going to be plenty of food. You know there's fried chicken because you know Jesus is a Baptist. That's just how we roll, right? You know it's going to be all kinds of food. But at that table, God is going to come. He's going to say, everybody remember what Jesus did? Of course. It's the reason that we're here. Let's celebrate the sacrifice. Let's celebrate my love. And in the kingdom, Jesus will once again take this meal. But until then, as we take the Lord's Supper, we shall remember what Jesus did on the cross. We should share in the presence that Jesus is with us. We shall commune with everybody in this room. We shall worship God that he is one. We should purify our hearts and our minds. We should proclaim that Jesus' death and his return. And then lastly, anticipate his coming, his kingdom. If we're doing a spiritual pre-check, if you were to give me a, a go and a no-go, do you personally know what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. It's a go or it's a no-go. It's a yes or a no. Do you believe that Jesus' death covered your sins and is the only way for your eternal salvation? That's a go and that's a no-go. Yes or no? Are you involved in a local church serving others and fellowshipping with other Christians? Well, what does that have to do anything? It's very hard to read the Bible without being a part of a church. God's not made us to be alone. Remember? Genesis chapter 2. In the garden he created man. It was not good for him to be alone, so he created a helper. We all need helpers. We all need a family. 
Is that a go or is that a no-go? Are you part of a church? Number five, do you worship God and long for his returning? Do you truly, daily, do you worship God and you long for him coming back? You long that we don't have to sit through and look at memorials of dead people anymore, but we all can rejoice in heaven. Do you have that much faith in God that says, I wish you would come back because everything that you have is greater than what I can do right now? Is that a go or a no-go? And lastly, do you daily purify your heart? Do you daily purify your heart and ask God to help you be more like him? That's the spiritual pre-checklist. That's why if you're getting ready for liftoff, those are the questions you have to go through and you have to say it's a go or it's a no-go. Because in these next six weeks as Green Acres, as we continue to count down and we get ready to lift off, we need everybody ready. We don't need Satan to find one foothold. We don't need anything to put us back. But we need to be a church that is ready to come back and on October the 18th, come back with a vengeance. Not come back with a new normal, but come back with a God's normal. And to say, we are here. We're here to reach our community. We're here to reach our neighbors. And we are ready to go forward. We're not hiding behind computer screens. We're not hiding behind Zooms anymore. We're going to do whatever it takes to reach the gospel. We're going to do whatever it is to take people who are dead, introduce them to Jesus so that now they are alive. For your spiritual pre-check, Before we take the Lord's Supper, are you a go or are you a no-go? Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that while we were still sinners, you sent Christ to die for us. That when we did not want you, when we did not want holy, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross because you love us. Father, help us as Green Acres, as we move forward, to help us as Satan will start to attack us, as Satan will be against us, as starting back up to launch out into our community. Will you help us to understand, are we spiritually ready to go or are we a no-go? Father, it is only by your cross that people can know you, It is only by your cross that we can fully know that we can be saved. Father, help us this morning not to see a cup of juice and a cracker, but to see your sacrifice, to see your death, to see the penalty you paid. for each one of us. Jesus is only your name. Amen.